Silenzi, cycling to his school in Trieste, Italy. He has a 50 euro note with which he plans to buy a costume for a party. At school, he sits behind his longtime crush, Stella. Their class is interrupted by a police officer named Giovanna, who also happens to be Michele's mother. She is there to inquire about a student's disappearance. Giovanna requests the class to inform the police if they hear from the missing student. After she leaves, Michele's nose starts to bleed, so he runs to the bathroom. His bullies, who have been troubling him for a long time, threaten him into handing them all of his money. He goes back home, disheartened by the incident. He brings out a few pennies he had saved and decides to buy one with the money. Michele then visits a rusty-looking store and asks for a superhero costume. The shopkeeper hands him a skin-tight overall and a lousy cape. He claims that it is the suit of a Chinese superhero. Michele doesn't seem fond of the costume, but buys it anyway. When Giovanna returns home from work, she sees Michele in his costume, refusing to go to the party because he thinks he looks stupid. She reassures him that he looks good and sends him to the party. There, Michele enjoys himself and even talks to his crush, Stella. But then, his bullies play a video of Stella walking through the street. They claim that the video was found on Michele's phone and that he has been stalking Stella. An embarrassed Michele runs to the bathroom and locks himself in. All of his classmates bang on the door from outside, asking him to open it. Michele is frustrated and wishes that he was invisible right before the lights go out. In the following scene, we see him jump out of the bathroom window and go back home. The next morning, Michele wakes up to his dog barking at him. He doesn't pay him much attention and goes to the bathroom to brush his teeth. When he looks into the mirror, Michele is beyond shocked to see just his robe in the brush. His body is invisible in the mirror. Michele rushes out and takes his robe off. Just then, his mother walks in and completely ignores the boy, proving that only Michele can see himself. When she starts looking around, Michele quickly writes that he has gone to school early on a piece of paper and places it on the bed. Giovanna reads it and dismisses the matter. After leaving the room, she calls Michele on his phone. An invisible Michele picks it up and tells her that he is fine. Confused about what he should do next, he dresses up in long-sleeved clothes. After covering every part of his body, he goes to school and watches Stella from afar. Michele then notices his bully and plans to teach him a lesson for troubling him so much. He takes his clothes off and walks inside the school naked and invisible. During class, he picks up the bully's paintball gun and uses it on the teacher, causing the teacher to suspend the bully. Then, Michele makes his way to the girls' changing room and watches them undress. Well, that didn't take him long. Suddenly, a towel lands on him, making his silhouette evident to everyone. Right then, his powers start to fade, making him visible again. The girls scream as they see a naked Michele under the towel. The next day, Michele is in his class, where a psychologist named Basili is giving a lecture about teens' mental health. Two of Michele's classmates have run away from home in the past month, so he thinks it is necessary to understand teens' way of thinking. As Michele listens to the lecture, his hands start to glow, and suddenly, they disappear. Thankfully, the class is over, and he runs out before anyone can see him disappear. He rushes home, covering all parts of his body, and sees his little sister Candela in his room. Michele asks her to go downstairs while facing the wall. A suspicious Candela opens and closes the door to make it seem like she has left. Michele doesn't turn around to check and starts to take his clothes off. When he turns around, Candela screams in fear, seeing her brother is invisible. Michele calms her down and tells her that his costume has given him superpowers. Meanwhile, at the police station, the psychiatrist Basili works with Giovanna to investigate the missing children. Giovanna insists that the children might be kidnapped, but Basili argues that they are just being rebellious, which is normal for their age. When Giovanna returns home, Michele is still invisible. Giovanna talks to someone on the phone, revealing that Michele is adopted. A surprised and hurt Michele walks out of the house to a nearby swing. While he is swinging, Stella arrives there and thinks Michele is a ghost. She doesn't seem to be scared and instead asks him to be her friend. He makes a smiling face on the sand to communicate with her. The two decide to meet again. After Stella leaves, Michele sees a man nearby staring at him, even though he is invisible. The man walks away using a stick, revealing that he is blind. At night, Michele visits Stella's home. Stella is delighted to have made an invisible friend. The two kiss, but right then, Michele's powers start to fade. He runs away before Stella can see his face. Later, Stella is in her gymnastic class alone. When a needle strikes her back, it makes her drop unconscious. Elsewhere, Michele has decided to tell Stella about him being the invisible boy. 
He makes his way to her gymnastic class with his dog. When he reaches the building, he sees a masked man carrying Stella. Michele attacks the man and the dog bites his hand. However, the man manages to escape with the girl. Later, the police arrive at the scene. They figure that the missing children weren't running away but have been kidnapped. Stella wakes up in a strange facility with her head attached to several wires. The psychiatrist Basili is there, interrogating her. It turns out that he is the one who has been kidnapping the children. They run some tests on the girl and send her to a cell. Two of her friends, who had gone missing before her, are there too. The following day, Michele is alone at a nearby beach when suddenly the blind man from the previous day appears in front of him. The man answers all of Michele's questions before he can ask them. It is as if he can read minds. When Michele asks him who he is, the man reveals that his name is Andrej and he is Michele's father. The boy doesn't believe Andrej and accuses him of lying. Andrej then begins to tell his story. He used to be a normal man from a small town in Russia until a devastating nuclear explosion hit the town. The radiation killed a lot of people and made a permanent change in others. It caused their DNA to mutate, giving them unique superhuman abilities like flying, telepathy, being invisible, and so on. These people were called the Specials and were brought to a military camp called the Division to be used as weapons. The Division used them beyond their capacity. The more power the Specials used, the weaker they got. Another side effect was that everyone was infertile except for Andrej and Michele's mother. The two gave birth to Michele, who was the first special kid, but as soon as he was born, they took him away. So, the parents decided to run away with Michele and were successful. But the people from the division weren't going to back down. They pursued the couple to bring the child back. Michele's father had the power to read people's minds, while his mother had the power to be invisible. Andrej managed to run away with Michele, but his wife was killed by the division. Andrej knew Michele wasn't safe with him, so he put him in front of Giovanna's door after reading her mind and confirming she was a good person. Now, the people of the division have found out that the special kid lives in the town. So, they are kidnapping children and testing them to see if they are special. After listening to his true origin, Michele is shocked. He almost doesn't believe it, but Andrej says that they do not have time to talk because the fisherman beside them thinks Andrej is suspicious and has called the police. Andrej hands Michele a suit that turns invisible along with his body. He then removes the fisherman's memory and leaves. The police arrive shortly along with Basili. Giovanna reveals to him that Michele is adopted, which makes Basili believe that he might be the special kid. He offers to take Michele home. When they reach home, Michele notices Basili's hand injury, which is the exact place his dog had bitten Stella's kidnapper. He looks at the man suspiciously and tries to run away. But it turns out that Basili has locked all the doors and is planning to abduct him. Michele runs into a room and takes off his clothes, turning invisible. He manages to escape while Basili follows him. When they are on the streets, Michele sees his bully, Ivan, on his bike. He sits behind him and asks him to drive away quickly. A nervous Ivan obliges. When they reach a safe area, Michele reveals himself to Ivan and tells him about their classmate's abduction. Meanwhile, Stella and her friends see ventilation on the ceiling. They climb on each other and Stella manages to step outside. While hiding from guards, she climbs a tower and reaches a searching light. Believing that her invisible friend is looking for her, she makes a smiling face on the light and flashes it up to the sky. Michele sees the smiling face and realizes that Stella is trying to hint at them. He and Ivan follow the light, but as soon as they get there, Stella is caught by the guards. Ivan causes an electrical malfunction using his paintball gun as an invisible Michele goes inside. He sees Basili and his men monitoring Giovanna and Andrej, who have joined hands to look for Michele. He then goes further in and knocks out a guard. Using his gun, he threatens the other guard to open the cell, where Stella and the others are trapped. After getting them out and trapping the guards inside, Michele reveals himself to his friends, who are beyond surprised. The boys want to run away, but Stella insists that they save an old man who she has seen locked in another room. She and Michele go to save the man, but Stella takes him to the villains instead and points a gun at Michele. She suddenly falls unconscious, and the old man behind her starts talking. It turns out that he has the power of mind control. He has been controlling Basili and Stella to get Michele here. He then brings down a submarine and puts Michele and Stella in it. The men take the two into the sea. Just then, Andrej and Giovanna arrive at the place and meet Ivan. The building has been set to explode in a few seconds. They quickly save the two abducted kids and Basili from inside. Andrej reads Basili's mind and realizes that someone was controlling them. 
They quickly get away from the building, which explodes into pieces right after. Back in the submarine, Michele discovers his telekinesis power and starts trashing the place. Using his powers, he manages to kill the men and save himself and Stella. They finally get back to the shore, where a lot of people are waiting for them. Michele goes invisible in front of them, flaunting his power. Andrej tells Michele that they will have to remove everyone's memories because the division will come looking for them again. Michele obliges and kisses Stella for the last time. Andrej tells Michele he will be back and leaves after erasing everyone's memories. Everyone then returns to their normal life. The scene cuts to somewhere in Russia. Michele's mother, who was thought to be dead, was only wounded in the encounter. She has defeated the division back then and is now ruling it. In fact, she was the one who sent those people to get Michele back to her. The woman is now against all the normal people who look at them as if they are freaks. At last, a guard informs her that although they lost Michele, they have found his twin sister, Natasha. A clip of the past shows us that Andrej ran away with two children that day. The movie ends as the guard tells Michele's mother that Natasha is somewhere in Morocco, hinting towards a sequel. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.